Let's talk about exams Medical board exams With Dr. Kwafu hey, hey. Viewers, on this channel, I interview doctors who have successfully passed or failed any medical board exams to share the exams preparation experience with us and with all those preparing to write this. If you are watching me and you have experience in any medical board exams and would like to share with us, kindly contact me on my Facebook page, Instagram, or leave a comment at the comment section of this video and I'll keep in touch. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and recommend this channel to any medical student or medical doctor who is preparing to write the board exams of any country. Thank you. Hello viewers. Welcome back to the medical board exam experience with Dr. Kwafu. A number of my followers sent me a question asking me whether they should take the USMLE exams or they should take the PLAB exams and practice as physicians in the UK. After interviewing a number of doctors who have successfully passed the USMLE exams and also the PLAB exams and also asking them their reason of choosing the USMLE or the PLAB exams, I decided to put all those information together and then compare the USMLE and the PLAB exams so that my followers can have more information that will enable them to make decisions as to whether they should take the USMLE exams or the PLAB exams. In this short video, we will first look at the general overview of the process that one has to go through to eventually get to practice as a physician in the United States or as a physician in the UK. Secondly, we'll look at the number of exams that one has to take if you want to take the USMLE pathway or the PLAB pathway. We'll also look at the eligibility criteria that one needs to be able to sit for any of these exams. We also look at the preparation time, the amount of time it takes to prepare for all those exams. And also the recommended resources. Um, if you want to know much about this, I recommend that you watch my interview with the successful students and then they will throw more light on how they studied and prepared for any of these exams. We also look at the exam structure of each of these board exams and also the fees and the cost involved in each of these board exams. We also look at the exams attempts and the validity. And finally, we'll look at the annual salary as a physician in any of these countries, UK or the United States. First of all, let's look at the, um, the general overview. For you to practice as a physician in the U US, the first thing you need to do is to have what we call the ECFMG verification. This process will enable you to get what we call the ECFMG number. It will also enable the ECFMG, which is the board that organizes the USML exams for foreign medical graduates, to verify or confirm with your medical school whether you really completed that medical school or you are really still a student in that medical school. So this first process is very important, the ECFMG verification. After going through that first step, you are required to register for either the step one or the step two CK. You can choose to take the step one first or the step two CK first, whichever you want. It doesn't matter. So let's assume you decided to take the step one first. So after the ECFM verification, you take the step one exams. After passing the step one exams, you then apply to take the step two CK. Um, formally, you are supposed to, after passing the step 2 CK, you are supposed to prepare and take the step 2 C, that is the step 2 clinical skills, but it has recently been cancelled permanently and has been replaced with an OET exams. The OET is an English exams. So, after taking the step 1, step 2 CK and the OET exams, you now begin to apply for residency. Now, the first stage is to buy the errors token. You have to register this to enable you to uh, get permission to, pre to, to apply for residency. Now, after going through this errors token or registering for this errors token, we have to do what we call the EPIC registration. This registration or verification enable the ECFMG to verify all your credentials 
whether you have experience back home or any medical credentials that you have, you need to verify it through this EPIC registration process. Most of the states in the United States are autonomous when it comes to health. And so, depending on the state that you want to practice or you want to have your residency, that state has to also verify your documents. So after the EPIC registration or the verification, you need to also do the state verification of documents. After that, then you can apply for match. You can apply for programs in the different hospitals or wherever you want to, um, the state that you, or the hospital that you want to have your residency in. After that stage, you have to have register for what we call the National Residency Matching Program. You need to create account with the National Residency Matching Program. This enable you to rank uh, the programs that you selected according to your own preference. I will come back to all these stages one by one and throw more light on them. The ones that require payments and the one that does not require payment. Now let's look at the PLAB exams. The PLAB journey, first of all, you need to take either the ILET or the OET exams. The ILET and the OET exams both are English exams. And the first step is you have to pass one of these exams before you can take any of the PLAB exams. With the PLAB, you cannot take PLAB 2 before PLAB 1. You have to take PLAB 1 before you can be qualified to take the PLAB 2. After taking the PLAB 1, PLAB 2, then you also do the EPIC verification. After that, then you do the GMC registration. GMC, which is the General Medical Council of UK. If you are fully registered with this uh, council, then you can now apply to work in UK. So, just comparing this slide, you can see that the USMLE journey is far, far, far longer than the PLAB journey. Now, let's look at the the number of exams that you need to take in each board exams. With the USMLE, you need to take three main exams. We have the step one, step two CK, and the step three. Recently, they have added the OET exams. I have put an asterisk here because the step three is not mandatory to uh, enter into residency. You can choose to take the step three exams before or during your residency. Now, looking at the PLAB exams, you need, in addition to the OET or the ILET exams, you need to take the PLAB 1 and the PLAB 2. So, again, comparing this slide, you can also clearly see that the PLAB exams require a less number of exams than the, uh, the USMLE exams. Now, let's look at the eligibility criteria. With the USMLE, you can write these exams when you are a medical student or a medical doctor. If you're a medical student, you qualify to write the exams. If you're a medical doctor, you also qualify to write the exams. Now with the PLAB, you have to be a medical graduate. And aside that, you have to also pass the OET or the ILET exams before you can take the PLAB exams. So comparing the PLAB and the USMLE uh, in terms of the eligibility criteria, you can see that the USMLE is a bit flexible as medical students can begin to take their board exams even before they graduate. Now, let's look at the preparation time. The step one um, can take about six to 12 months. Now, this number is not uh, for medical students in US. This number is for international medical graduates students who studied medicine outside the United States. Now, the number of months or years depends on the on individual's commitment, but on average, it takes foreign medical graduates six to 12 months to prepare for step one. Step two CK, it takes on average four to six months. Usually, if you choose to, to take the step two CK before step one, then you need more time to prepare for the step two CK. But if you take step 2 CK after step 1, the step 2 CK is uh, build up uh, knowledge on the step 1 information. So it is uh, quite easier if you take it after step 1. 
and also it will take lesser time if you take it after step one so if you take step two seek after step one on average you can use two four to six months to prepare for it the oet exams um, can take one to two months to be fully prepared so looking at the usmle journey the number of months or years one needs to completely finish all the exams needed in the usmle journey you need um less than two years for a committed person less than two years you can go through all these exams process for usmle uh, pathway now let's look at the plab the plab the oet or the eyelet can take one or two months plab one for a committed person can take two to four months plab two can also take one to three months so the plab one one needs at least or let's say at most one year people use less than one year to finish all the plab journey so again comparing usmle and the plab in terms of preparation time you can see that the usmle requires more time than the plab exams and so most people conclude that the USML is far more difficult than the PLAB exams. Now let's look at the recommended resources. I have interviewed a number of students who have successfully passed the PLAB exams and also the USML exams. But all the students I interview, they all play around these resources, though some add additional resources. But these are the core resources that they use. For the step one, most of them use u word question bank this question bank they say it is mandatory it is highly recommended the first aid second they also use the first aid the first aid they even call it the bible of the usmle step one exams that you can't do without it they also highly recommend patoma so for the step one you need the u word question bank first aid and patoma and also with the step 2 CK, if you did step 1 first, then you need just the U word question bank for step 2 CK to prepare for the step 2 CK. Though other students, depending on the level of knowledge, can add other resources to enable them to understand these resources very well. Now with the PLAB exams, the students play around these resources, PLABABLE, which is also like a question bank with and in-depth explanations also the plab keys and also the 1700 recall questions these are questions that let's say uh, they are past questions for the plab exams students who have taken the plab exams they leave the exams hall and try to recall the questions they saw during the exams most of the questions in this 1700 recall questions are not complete as not all the students are able to fully recall the the entire question they saw but then it is uh, questions that gives you a clear overview of how the main exams is since it is it can be called the real past questions of the PLAB exams and so these are also the resources that is highly recommended to successfully pass the PLAB 1 exams now let's look at the exam structure with the USMLE the step 1 tests your mastery of basic sciences Step 1 tests you on your embryology, your biochemistry, your anatomy, your pharmacology, your pathology, your statistics, all the basic sciences that international medical graduates studied in their first four years of medical school. This exam is a, is a 280 MCQs exam, which is uh, conducted in an 8-hour testing session. The number of MCQs can be a little above or a little less than 280, but it's mostly around 280 MCQs. And it is conducted in 8-hour testing session. It's also it's a one-day exam. The Step 2 CK tests your mastery and skills of clinical science. So the, te uh, the Step 2 CK tests uh, the students, as let's say the foreign medical graduates, the what they studied during their last two years of MBBS or medical school. Um, you can mention pediatrics, surgery, internal medicine, ops and gynae, and all those clinical subjects. The step 2 CK plays around 318 MCQs. 
and it is conducted in nine hour testing session. You can take the step one either in US or outside US. Whether you, that is, it depends whether you have a test center in your country, but most countries have test centers for USMLE exams. You can also take the step two CK either in US or outside US. With the PLAB1 exams, it tests your mastery of clinical sciences. So with the PLAB, there's nothing like basics. Usually medical students see the basics as more difficult than the clinicals. And so since the step one, USMLE tests your basics, one can easily draw a conclusion that preparing for step one is more difficult and you need more time to be able to review all those minute information you studied in first year in second year of medical school the plab one is 180 mcqs exams conducted in three hours the plab two tests your communication skills history taking skills practical skills It's basically an oski exams and it's three hours exams with 18 clinical stations it is conducted only in uk but the plab one can be uh, is conducted either in uk or in some countries outside UK. Let's look at the fees and costs. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, with the ECF only verification, for you to successfully go through that verification process, you you spend one hundred and forty-five dollars. The step one, if you are taking the exams in the United States you will spend $965. But if you are taking the exams outside the US, there is an additional $200. Step 2 CK, the same. If you are taking the exams in the US, it's $965. But if you are taking the exams outside the US, it is, there is an additional $200. The OET exams, irrespective of where you are taking it, is $500. The ERAS token that gives you permission to begin your residency application cost $130. The EPIC registration, which verify your credentials, cost $215. The state verification of documents cost $50. And to apply for residency programs, each program comes with a cost. So depending on the number of programs you are applying to, most foreigners can apply to about 50 programs, 100 programs, 200 programs. So depending on the number of programs will determine the amount you spend. But most students spend between $300 to $4,000 just for applying for residency programs. Now, after applying for the residency program, as I mentioned earlier, you need to create an account, the NRMP account, which enable you to uh, to rank your programs to your preference and this account also will cost hundred dollars This process does not include your accommodation your um, air ticket to US and mostly the US MLA journey also requires clinical experience in US at least three months clinical experience if you do not have a, a, a free hospital a doctor that will help you gain this experience you need to pass through agency and you're not going to spend at least you're going to spend at least two thousand dollars per month to gain each clinical experience and you need three of these sorry three months of these so each month it each month three two thousand dollars for um three months is going to cost about six thousand dollars so if you add that six thousand dollars to this then with the USMLE journey, you are not spending less than $16,000. Now, for the sake of comparison, I also um, mentioned the amount involved in the PLAB journey in dollars so that you can have proper comparison. Now, the ILETS exams cost $225. The OET costs $500, so you can take any of these exams. PLAB 1 costs $350. PLAB 2 costs $1,200. The EPIC verification for PLAB cost 280 and the GMC registration. If you graduated or you've graduated less than five years before on uh, during the time of application for the GMC registration, you will pay $218. If you have graduated more than five years 
as at the time that you are applying for the GM's registration, you are going to pay $506. So comparing these costs, it is clear that the plug journey requires less um, is require less financial involvement compared to the USMLE exams. So let's look at the exams attempts and the validity. With the USML, you can have four attempts. That is, you can fill the exams and retake it four times. But then, if you pass the exams, you have to finish the entire process within seven years. After seven years, the exam that you have passed becomes invalid. With the PLAB exams, you also have four attempts. But then, if you need the fifth attempt, you need to seek permission from the GMC. Each of the PLAB journey or the PLAB exams the exams is valid for two years so let's say if you take the oet exams and pass it you have to take the plab exams or the or the finish finish the process within two years now the annual salary the annual salary uh, of physicians practicing in us and the uk overall the us doctors are paid much better than the uk doctors and then with the amount it depends on your specialty but in general if you're a general practitioner you can take um, not more than uh, just a little more than hundred thousand uh, uh, pounds if you're a specialist just a little more than hundred and ten thousand pounds but then in us you can take up to if you are depend on your specialty you can take up to four hundred thousand dollars so um, when it comes to salary, the U.S. physicians are paid much more than the U.K. physicians. Now, let's um, summarize all that I've said in this short slide. With the U.S. MLE, as I mentioned, it requires more studying because you need to go back and build a strong foundation of your basis. basis. The PLAB requires less studying. The U.S. MLE requires more time plab less time with the usml it's hard to study it with a job um the plab you can easily do the plab alongside a job maybe when it's getting closer to the exams you can quit the job and focus more on it the usml exams is generally accepted that it's very difficult compared to the plab and the usml you need to take three exams but the plab you need to take two exams also the entry into the uk system is very easy but the us mle the us mle or the us um, entry into the us health system is very competitive very competitive very difficult financially involving but then if you eventually get into it um you will reap all that you've sold now entry into the uk health system is not direct just that the plab is the most common way there are so many ways that you can enter to practice as a physician in UK. When it comes to US, it's direct. You have to take the USMLE exam. It is the only way we can end up practicing in the U United States. When it comes to training quality, it is great in UK, but arguably it is US, uh, training US is the best in the whole world. The training duration in UK is between three to eight years same as us three to eight years working hours as a physician in uk is between 40 to 40 hours per week but in us is between 80 to 110 hours per week the starting salary of a resident or as a as a, as a young doctor in uk is 2700 pounds in us per month per month you can take 3200 at the beginning Consultants, if you're a consultant in UK, you can take between 75,000 to 100,000. But then if you are a consultant in the United States, you can take between $150,000 and $400,000 per year. So viewers, this is what I have as far as UK and the US Medical Board exam is concerned. If you need further clarification or have uh, any question that I didn't talk about, kindly uh, leave 
the message at the description button of this video and i will respond to you please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and thank you for watching